Happy summer, everyone. My name is Christine from the Conkle Library, and our theme for summer reading this year is Tales and Tales. So we have some stories about animals this year. I'm going to start with Dr. Seuss's book, If I Ran the Zoo. And you know Dr. Seuss will probably come up with some interesting animals. If I Ran the Zoo by Dr. Seuss. It's a pretty good zoo, said young Gerald McGrew. And the fellow who runs it seems proud of it, too. But if I ran the zoo, said young Gerald McGrew, I'd make a few changes. That's just what I'd do. The lions and tigers and that kind of stuff they have up here now are not quite good enough. You see, things like these in just any old zoo, they're awfully old-fashioned. I want something new. So, I'd open each cage. I'd unlock every pen. Let the animals go and start over again. And somehow or other, I think I could find some beasts of a much more unusual kind. A four-footed lion's not much of a beast. The one in my zoo will have ten feet at least. Five legs on the left and five more on the right. Then people will stare. They'll say, what a sight. This zookeeper, new keeper Gerald's quite keen. That's the gold darnest lion I ever have seen. My new McGrew Zoo will make people talk. My new zoo, McGrew Zoo, will make people gawk at the strangest odd creatures they ever did walk. I'll get for my zoo a new sort of hen who roosts in another hen's top knot, and then another one roosts in the top knot of his, and another on his, and another on his, and so forth, and upward and onward, gee whiz. But that's just a start. I'll do better than that. They'll see me next day in my zookeeper's hat, coming into my zoo with an elephant cat. They'll be so surprised they'll all swallow their gum. They'll ask, when they see my strange animals come, where do you suppose he gets things like that from? His animals all have some very odd faces. I'll bet he must hunt them in rather odd places. And that's what I'll do, said young Gerald McGrew. If you want to catch beasts you don't see every day, you have to go places quite out of the way. You have to go places no others can get to. You have to get cold and you have to get wet, too. Up past the North Pole where the frozen winds squeal, I'll go and I'll hunt in my Skeagle-mobile and bring back a family of what do you know? And that's how my new zoo, McGrew Zoo, will grow. I'll hunt in the mountains of the Zombamatant with helpers who all wear their eyes at a slant and capture a fine fluffy bird called the Bustard who only eats custard with sauce made of mustard and also a very fine beast called the Flustered who only eats mustard with sauce made of custard. I'll catch him in caves and I'll catch him in brooks. I'll catch him in crannies and I'll catch him in nooks that you don't read about in geography books. I'll catch him in countries that no one can spell like the country of Matafapatafapel. In a country like that, if a hunter is clever, he'll hunt up some beasts that you never saw ever. I'll load up five boats with a family of jokes, whose feet are like cows but wear squirrel skin coats, and sit down like dogs but have voices like goats, excepting they can't sing the very high notes. And then I'll go down to the wilds of Nantucket and capture a family of lunks in a bucket. Then people will say, now I liked that boy heaps. His new zoo, McGrew Zoo, is growing by leaps. He captures them wild and he captures them meek. He captures them slim and he captures them sleek. What do you suppose he will capture next week? I'll capture one tiny, I'll capture one cute, I'll capture a deer that no hunter would shoot, a deer that's so nice he could sleep in your bed, if it weren't for those horns that he has on his head. 
And speaking of horns that are just a bit queer, I'll bring back a very odd family of deer. A father, a mother, two sisters, a brother, whose horns are connected from one to another, whose horns are so mixed they can't tell them apart, can't tell where they end and can't tell where they start. Each deer's mighty puzzled. He is never yet found if his horns are hers or the other way around. I'll capture them fat, and I'll capture them scrawny. I'll capture a scragglefoot mulligatawny, a high-stepping animal, fast as the wind. From the blistering sands of the desert of Zind, this beast is the beast that the brave chieftains ride when they want to go fast to find some place to hide. A mulligatawny is fine for my zoo, and so is a chieftain. I'll bring one back, too. If the far western part of the southeast North Dakota lives a very fine animal called the iota. But I've captured one who is even much finer in the northeastern west part of South Carolina. When people see him, they will say, now by thunder, this new zoo, McGrew Zoo, is really a wonder. Most beasts are quite friendly, but still, in some lands, some beasts are too dangerous to catch with bare hands. For those that are ugly and vicious and mean, I'll build a bad animal catching machine. I'd ra it's rather expensive to build such a kit, but with it a hunter can never get bit. A zoo should have bugs, so I'll capture a thwirl, whose legs are snarled up in a terrible snarl. And then I'll go out and I'll capture some chugs, some keen shooter, mean shooter, bean shooter bugs. I'll go to Africa's island of Yurka and bring back a tizzle-topped tufted mazurka, a kind of canary with quite a tall throat. His neck is so long if he swallows an oat. For breakfast, the first day of April, they say, it has to go down such a very long way that it gets in his stomach the 15th of May. I'll bag a big bug who is very surprising, a feller who has a propeller for rising and zooming around making cross-country hops from Texas to Boston with only two stops. Now that sort of thing for a bug is just tops. And when I've caught him, then the next thing you know, I'll go and I'll capture a wild tic-tac-toe with X's that win, with zeros that lose. He'll look mighty good in this zoo of McGrew's. I'll bring back a gusset and a gherkin, a gasket, and also a gooch from the wilds of Nantasket. And eight Persian princes will carry the basket. But what their names are, I don't know, so don't ask it. In a cave in Khartoum live a beast called the Natch that no one other hunts. Again. <clears throat> In a cave in Khartoum lives a beast called the Natch that no other hunter's been able to catch. He's hidden for years in his cave with a pout, and no one's been able to make him come out. But I'll coax him out with a wonderful meal that's cooked by my cooks in my cooker mobile. He'll fix up a dish that is just to his taste, three chicken croquettes made of library paste. And then sprinkled with peanut shucks, pickled and spiced, then baked at 600 degrees and then iced. It's mighty hard cooking to cook up such feasts. But that's how the new zoo, McGrew Zoo, gets beasts. I'll go to the faraway mountains of Tobsk, near the river of Nopsk, and I'll bring back an Obsk. A sort of, kind of, a thingamabobsk, who only eats rhubarb and corn on the cobsk. Then people will flock to my zoo in a mobsk. But McGrew, they will say, does a wonderful jobsk. He hunts with such vim and he hunts with such vigor. His new zoo, McGrew Zoo, gets bigger and bigger. And speaking of birds, there's the Russian Pluski, whose head ski is red ski and his belly is blue ski. I'll get one of them for my zoo ski, McGrew ski. Then the whole town will gasp. Why, this boy never sleeps. No keeper before has ever kept what he keeps. There's no telling what that fellow will do. And then just to show them, 
I'll sail to Katru and bring back an Itkutch, a Preep and a Prue, a Nurkle, a Nerd, and a Seersucker, too. And I'll hunt in the jungles of Hippo No Hungus and bring back a flock of wild Bippo No Bungus. Bippo No Bungus from Hippo No Hungus are better than those down in Dippo No Dungus and smarter than those out in Nippo No Nungus, and that's why I'll catch them in Hippo No Hungus instead of those others in Nungus and Dungus. And people will say when they see this Bips bounding, this zookeeper, new zookeeper, is simply astounding. He travels so far that you'd think he would drop. When do you suppose this young fellow will stop? Stop? Well, I should. But I won't stop until I've captured the Fizzamawizamadil, the world's biggest bird from the island of Gwark, who only eats pine trees and spits out the bark. And boy, when I get him back home to my park, the whole world will say, Young McGrew's made his mark. He's built a zoo better than Noah's whole ark. These wonderful, marvelous beasts that he chooses have made him the greatest of all the McGrewses. Wow, they'll all cheer. What this zoo must be worth. It's the gold darnest zoo in the face of the earth. Yes, that's what I'll do, said young Gerald McGrew. I'll make a few changes if I ran the zoo. Isn't that silly? Well, you can think about how you might run the zoo someday. And you can come to the library and pick up your own zoo in a box. It says, my zoo. It has some pictures of Gerald's zoo. But if you want to put your animals in a zoo, you can open the box. And there may be some flamingos in your zoo. Or some turtles. Or some camels that you can play with. And if you want to let them out of the cages, they can go around your house, on your fridge, or on your couch. And you can play with your zoo, but then you can always put them back into your box. That is your zoo, the way you want it to be.